Okay, let's go over some basic unit conversions. So this is just an intro to the general way that you take one unit and convert it to another unit. We start with a very simple one right here, the liters to deciliters. And when dealing with these, um, there is a few steps that generally apply to any conversion, no matter how simple or complicated. And one of them is that we can look at what we're trying to do and kind of make a plan. So when you look at what you have and what you're trying to get, one of the things you need to do is decide, okay, what am I gonna do? For a simple one like this, it is possible to convert liters directly to deciliters. So that kind of, this is why I talk about like making a plan. For more complicated problems, this becomes a little more important. But this is essentially what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna convert liters to deciliters in a one-step conversion. Now, when I do the actual conversion itself, after coming up with the plan, the first step is to write up what I'm given. So if I'm given one liter, I write one liter. And then if I'm doing one conversion, I put it times and then a conversion factor. And that's what's gonna set this up. So step one is I write what I'm given. Step two is I then set up the units. So I'm trying to get deciliters as an answer and that means in order for the deciliters to be here, it needs to be on top. So deciliters goes here. And actually, even more importantly than that, well, I'll, I'll come down with my thought in a sec. So uh, liters goes on the bottom. Now, why am I doing it this way? Because liters goes on bottom so we can cancel liters here. Deciliters goes on top so we can be at the end. Now, what am I saying when I talk about canceling here? This is the idea that units can be treated like numbers. So we would say, if you take the number five times one over five, we would say five cancels five to give one. If you have a unit like liters, we're gonna say the same thing. Liters times one over liters cancels to just leave one. Like these things cancel away because on top and on bottom. So we understand that like this is times, and then you times by whatever's on top, divide by whatever's on bottom. And that's kind of what's going on here. So we put it this way because liters is not part of the final answer, only deciliters is. So this allows us to, and I can even do this to show that it cancels out and is not going to be part of the final answer. So that's why I put the liters on the bottom so that it can cancel the liters here and not be part of the answer. Put deciliters on top so it can be on top in the final answer. So uh, I'll remove this out of the way. So step one, write what you're given. Step two, Set up your units so that the right things cancel and get what you want. Step three is when you go and fill in your numbers. So uh, that is where the reference sheet comes in handy. I can grab a copy of the reference sheet over here. Um, it's the one that looks like this. And right here, it says that deci means one-tenth. So if deci equals one-tenth, That means the number 10 belongs in that fraction somewhere. So my rule is you put the big number next to the small unit. So that means deci involves the number 10. And between the two, this is a full liter. This is 1 tenth of a liter. So the big number, this one, goes next to the small unit. A tenth of a liter is less than a liter. So big number goes next to the small unit. Just put a 1 in the other place. So then that means one, the way it looks in a calculator, and I'll grab a calculator that way I can actually show this. This is a very, very simple one. Well, you don't even need a calculator to do this one, but nonetheless, it's the process that's important that we care about here. So I take one times whatever's on top, so times 10, divided by one, answer is 10. Now, obviously, divided by one doesn't change anything, but Theoretically, it's what you do, and I mention it because it becomes important for more complex problems. So that's what the calculator spits out. So again, this was set up, write what you're given is step one. Step two, set up the units. Step three, plug in the numbers and solve. So that's why this is doing it done as it is. Last thing for significant figures. This is one sig fig. This is not one sig fig. This is a definition. Because they're both metric units, 
any relation between them is a definition. So because same measuring system. There, this, is a, this relationship between the two is a, me, is a definition because they're both metric units. So that means that infinite sig figs, and if it's infinite sig figs, it means it does not affect the rounding. So one sig fig, infinite sig figs, your answer should have one sig fig, and it does. So boxed it with correct sig figs and added units. These are the very important things. So that's overview for a very simple one. Of course, I'm going to go into more complex ones. Now, this is the uh, animated presentation used in the class. So this, this here is this. And so I can remove this and move on to the next question. Let's see. Uh, here you go. 5.46 grams equals blank kilograms. So once again, our plan, before we do anything, your plan. Can you convert grams to kilograms? We look on the chart, kilogram, kilo means a thousand, so that means a kilogram is a thousand grams, so that means you can do the conversion directly off the chart. So we're going to just go gram to kilogram, single step conversion, easy. So because of that, I can go through the steps. Step one, write what you're given, 5.64 grams. Step two, set up the units. Conversion factor of one conversion, one conversion factor equals something in kilograms. So as I set up the units, I put, it's gonna involve grams and kilograms. So grams goes down here so that it can cancel with grams. Kilograms goes on top so it can be in the answer. And then I use this chart to find the relationship between grams and kilograms, which is to say that kilo means a thousand so the big unit number goes next to the small unit. So kilo equals 1,000. And the big number goes next to the small unit. So is which one's smaller? 1,000 grams or a single gram? Well, obviously, a single gram is smaller than 1,000 grams. So this is the small unit. The big number goes next to the small unit. So a kilogram is 1,000 grams. So then what you do then is check, okay, grams cancels grams, kilograms is the final answer, great. You grab your calculator, you calculate it out, 5.64 grams times one divided by 1,000. Or since timesing by one doesn't do anything, we'll just say 5.64 divided by 1,000. The answer is, let's see what it do with the pen, ah, 0.00564 kilograms. Now this is, uh, okay, so that's what we start with. Now we've got to turn into correct scientific notation and the proper form, because this is required scientific notation. First of all, do we round three sig figs? How many sig figs here? It's tempting to say one sig fig, but remember, two metric units, same measuring system. This is a definition. Infinite sig figs. Infinite sig figs, because it's a definition, because these are both metric units. So that means 5.64 divided by 1,000 equals that. Infinite sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs, and the answer, and this is three sig figs, so that works just fine. So we simply convert this to scientific notation. Let's see, one, two, three. So 5.64 times 10 to the negative third kilograms. And I'll box this final answer. Correct sig figs, scientific notation, has units. That's really important things we look for on the exam. All right, so that would be how you take on another example of a single step conversion. Now, uh, I will put the worked out version of that on the board and bring up the next one. This is a two step conversion. Wait, how do I know it's a two step conversion? And how do I know these are single step conversions? It's because the chart, this chart, tells you the relationship between a base unit and a version of the base unit, which is to say, like, look, a liter and a deciliter. Deciliters are just a tenth of a liter. This is the base unit here. This is just a tenth, this is a different version of the liter. This is a different version of the grams. This is base unit. 
So the chart tells the relationship between kilograms and grams, deciliters and liters, centiliters and liters, gigaliters and liters, nanoliters and liters. So as, if you have this as your, th as your conversion, if it involves the base unit, a single step conversion is all you need. When it is neither of these is the base unit, microgram and decigram have in common the word gram. Gram is the base unit. Neither one of these is gram. So you can't do this in one step, which means um, we got to do more than one step for this. So if you're starting with micrograms, you're looking that up on the chart. Micro means one one millionth of a gram. That's the thing. Micro means one one millionth. So microgram is one one millionth of a gram. This chart has no information about how many micrograms are in a decigram. So because of that, your only choice is to convert microgram to gram first, and then take that number of grams and convert to decigrams, because the chart does have deci on here, but it tells you how many decigrams are in a gram. So the chart can get you from micrograms to grams. The chart can also get you from grams to decigrams. So we have to take two steps to get across this. So uh, you could also draw it out as like, you would like to go from microgram to decigram. That'd be great, but it can't. It's like standing on a busy street looking at Taco Bell across the street or something you really wanted to cross, but you gotta go to the crosswalk. So the equivalent of going to the crosswalk is convert to grams first, and then from grams you can go to decigrams. It's like crossing the street and then coming back to what's on the other side, like crossing at the crosswalk or something. So that's essentially what we're doing. You can't go directly, so you gotta go indirectly. So what does that actually look like? Now that we have the plan, this plan is telling me that I'm gonna do two conversions in order to make this work. So here's what it actually looks like. Step one, right where you're given. 785,493.44 micrograms times, you know, whatever. That's what you're given. And then next set of the units, we're going to have two conversion factors. There's the first one. There's the second factor. And you're going to eventually get something in decigrams. So how do I get decigrams to work here? What I need to do is first conversion factor is this one right here, converting micrograms to grams. Second conversion factor from grams to decigrams. So first conversion factor, micrograms is not part of your final answer, it must cancel. So first conversion factor is micrograms and grams. So it's gonna be micrograms on the bottom, grams on top. That way micrograms cancels micrograms. I'll even do this to remind myself that they've been successfully canceled. Next, this conversion happens here. Now grams is not part of my final answer either. So I'm going to put grams on the bottom for the second conversion factor. That way, grams cancel grams, and put decigrams on top. This way it's in the final answer. So the next thing to do is simply fill it in from the chart. Or, is, yeah, so according to what the chart says, the micro means one one millionth. So that means the number, let's see, micro. one one millionth so that means you got to put the number million next to the small unit now which one's smaller a gram or one one millionth of a gram obviously one one millionth of a gram is the smaller unit so the big number goes next to the small unit now just put a one here same thing for deci deci means one tenth deci equals one tenth so i'm going to put that number 10 next to the smaller unit. Hmm, a tenth of a gram or one gram? A tenth of a gram is smaller, so the bigger number goes next to the smaller unit. So, what does this actually look like? The calculation is you take your 785493.44, divide it by a million, because it's on the bottom of this fraction, that means you divide it by a million. So I make sure to type in the right number of zeros. Okay, and then push enter, and then times it by 10. Times 10, enter. 7.8549, blah, 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 I'll write the raw calculator output. 
eight, five, four, nine, three, four, four. So, okay, there's the raw calculator number. Now, what do we do with it? First of all, check your sig figs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sig figs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many sig figs here? Are these both metric units? Hmm, grams and grams. Yes, they are. That means infinite sig figs because they're part of the same measuring system. Are these both metric units? Decigrams and grams. Yes, they are. Same measuring system, infinite sig figs. So, infinite sig figs because both are same measuring system. And that's true for this one, and that's true for this one. So eight sig figs, infinite and infinite means eight sig figs. So we don't need to change the rounding. So we will box that final answer. Could this be written with scientific notation? Yes, it could, but it's in the range of numbers where it wouldn't necessarily be required. So that's a two-step conversion. So uh, in terms of how that goes, this is one where you have like all, these are definitions. These are definitions because they're both the same measuring system. Uh, we can look at an example where it's not the case. And let's see if I have one on here. I should somewhere. Uh, this will do. So where do we have one that's not a definition? One where the conversion factor does not have infinite significant figures. This would be a good example. Five, 6,542 feet equals blank kilometers. Okay. So we gotta look and see what we can find in here to get us from feet to kilometers. There is nothing on here that says how many feet are in a kilometer. It does tell you how many feet are in a mile. So we can take feet and convert to miles. And then there's another thing on here, this portion of the reference sheet, that tells you how many miles are in a kilometer. So we can convert miles to kilometers. That would allow us to get what we need. Okay, time to do the actual calculation with two conversion factors, one for this and one for this conversion. So step one, right, you're given 6,542. Oops. 542 feet. Step two, set up your units. First conversion factor, second conversion factor, final unit. Next, set up the units. Okay, feet and miles should be in the first conversion factor, so feet and miles. Put feet on the bottom, so let these cancel. I put miles on the other place, so feet cancel feet. Next, miles and kilometers go in the next conversion factor. So we put miles here so that it cancels away and is not part of the final answer, and kilometers on top so that it is part of the final answer. Okay, so that's step two, set at the end. Step three, plug in the numbers. How many feet in a mile? What's the relationship between feet and miles? Well, you look right here, it says one mile equals 5,280 feet, so one mile equals 5,280 feet. Here, kilometers per miles. You actually have two choices. This chart says one kilometer equals 0 0.6214 miles. It also says one mile equals 1.61 kilometers. Which one do you use? The answer is, doesn't matter, either one. Okay, I'll use this one, just for fun. Um, 0.6214 miles is one kilometer. So one kilometer is 0 0.6214 miles. So given that, we now have our setup. And actually, maybe just for making a point, I'll use the other one too. Six, Five, four, two feet times one mile 
5,280 feet. Let's see, I'll use this one just to make a point. 1.61 kilometers is equal to one mile equals blank kilometers. So in this one, I mean, this conversion factor using here, this conversion factor being used here, I want to show, make the point that they give essentially the same answer, but also I want to show, out, show off a limitation too. Um, so do the actual calculation. Here. 6,542 divided by 5,280 equals divided by 0.6214 equals and the answer is 1.9939091592 blah that's your raw output from the calculator what happens if I do it with the other one with a different conversion factor 6,542 divided by 5,280 equals, remember you divide by whatever's on bottom, times by whatever's on top. One doesn't make a difference, so this one will though, times 1.61. And the answer that pops out of the calculator is 1.9948143394 kilometers. Not exactly the same number, but that's pretty close. For our purposes, it's gonna give almost essentially the same answer. Now, um, okay, actually we do need to talk about how to round this off because that's the next thing. You've got your answers. It's a set, it's almost the same. So how do you actually go about rounding it off? Um, hopefully it's clear this is four significant figures. Four sig figs. And same number, so obviously same. Four sig figs. How many sig figs is this? It's not one, it's not three. These are the same English measuring system. Infinite sig figs. Same measuring system. So infinite sig figs, infinite sig figs. One mile equals 5,280 feet. These are both English units. It's a definition. And because it's a definition that makes it infinite significant figures. Here, not infinite significant figures. This is four sig figs. This is three sig figs. So why? Because that's an English unit, mile is English, kilometers metric. A mile is based on the foot, which is based on the size of King Henry the sixth foot. Kilometer is a certain fraction of the, of the circumference of the Earth at its equator. So, different units, not equivalent. This is sort of like the number pi. Just like pi is approximately equal to 3.14159, blah, 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 goes on forever. This number is actually, let's see, what is this? A kilometers per mile is actually approximately equal to 0 0.6214, blah, blah, blah. It goes on forever. We've only, we've actually rounded this to four sig figs for your convenience. So whenever you have two different measuring systems, you have not infinite significant figures. Because different measuring systems. Same thing is true here. Now the difference is four sig figs, three sig figs. So actually there is a difference in terms of which one you choose because this one, four sig figs, infinite and four, you're going to round to four sig figs, 1.994 kilometers. This one four sig figs, infinite, and three, actually forces you to round to three significant figures. 1.99 kilometers. So sometimes, yeah, the number you choose to work with can influence how you round. Either one of these would be okay, though. If you, if you use this, as long as you got the right sig figs, you're okay. If you use this, it's fine, as long as you get the right significant figures. So it really just comes down to a matter of rounding. Neither one of these would be any better than the other. So on a test, they'd be treated the same. So it's just a matter of paying attention to what you're working with. 
Again, same measuring system, infinite sig figs. Different measuring system, not infinite significant figures. So that really is about as far as this sort of a thing goes. Um, the last thing I think I can show is a just adding um, another step to conversions. Let's do one. Let's see. With where you're converting something on top and something on bottom. Ah, okay, this will work. 55 miles an hour to meters per second. So if you convert miles an hour to meters per second, let's do a plan first. Miles can be converted not to meters. There's nothing on the chart for that, but you can convert miles to kilometers, and then you can convert kilometers to meters. Hours, the chart doesn't say anything about how many, how to convert hours directly to seconds, but you can convert hours to minutes, and you can take that number of minutes and convert it to seconds. So that's our plan. Miles to kilometers, to meters, and then hours, to minutes, to seconds. So that's our plan of attack. It actually doesn't matter which one you do first, if you convert the miles first or the hours first, because the wonderful thing about multiplication is that regardless of what order you do things in, it comes out the same. Three times four is the same as four times three. So. 55.0 miles per hour. Uh, I'll do this top one first for no good reason. I could have done the bottom one first just as well. So I want to convert miles. Oh, by the way, one, two, three, four conversions are going to be necessary. So one, two, three, four conversions. Miles to kilometers. So miles on bottom so that I can cancel to kilometers. Second version, kilometers to meters. Kilometers on bottom, so that I can cancel, meters on top. Okay, I wanna make sure kilometers can cancel. It's not part of the final answer. Next inversion, hours to minutes. So notice hours is on bottom, so I need to put hours on top so that it can cancel, and I'll put minutes in the other place. And then last one, minutes to seconds. So I put minutes on top, and then seconds in the other place. Why? So that minutes can cancel. By the way, check out what happens when it's done. At the end of it, you're gonna get what didn't cancel. Let's see, meters didn't cancel, so meters is on top, and then seconds didn't cancel, so seconds is on bottom. Meters per second, exactly what it's asking for. So uh, let me check to make sure it's actually visible on screen. Oh, barely not, let's move the camera a little bit, okay. That was step one. I wrote what is given right here. Step two, I wrote out the units and figured out how to set them up so they cancel properly. Step three, plug in the numbers. So uh, on the chart, I choose, um, where is it? Here we go. 1.61 kilometers per mile. Kilo means a thousand, so 1,000 meters, big number next to the small unit, is equal to one kilometer. An hour is 60 minutes. One minute is 60 seconds. So that's what the setup looks like. Now for the actual calculation itself. 55.00 times whatever's on top divided by whatever's on the bottom. So times 1.61 equals times a thousand equals divided by 60 equals divided by 60 again equals and at the end of that what's popping out at me is uh, 24.597222 repeating meters per second how many sig figs four significant figures, three significant figures. Again, this is because 
Different measuring systems means not infinite significant figures. Let's see, infinite significant figures. Why? Both metric, infinite sig figs, it's a definition. Both time units, infinite sig figs, it's a definition. Both of these are time units also. So, yep, these are all infinite significant figures. So, four sig figs, three sig figs, infinite, you round your answer to three significant figures, or 24.6 meters per second. That would be what we'd be looking at for the answer to this. Now, what if I had decided to do these bottom conversions first and the top? It would have given me the exact same answer. Rounded the exact same way, it wouldn't matter. Um, if I had used one kilometer equals 0.6214 miles, same answer, though I would have rounded slightly differently because it would have been a different number of significant figures. But nonetheless, the process remains overall the same. So you'll notice that even though you're converting both bottom and top units, in terms of what it looks like, it's just more conversion factors. So what we're looking at here is really just a continuation of the same thing. All right, so I think that should give pretty much a good overview. Um, that this really, although there will be many questions that look different from this essentially any other question asked is just some version of the same thing in terms of like the way you actually solve anything what it comes down to actually working out on paper it's going to look like this format so there's really not anything too much new after this